afterwards, um, while we were at lunch, we got all this stuff deployed. <coughs> so it changed our name, the rooftop unit. <coughs> we've got the air handling unit. We've got our VAVs going now. So application was successful. Deployment status all green. That was all good. So we can close that out. You can go ahead and close that custom application wizard. We don't need to do that. So let's talk about uh, um, audit. We talked a little bit about audit in, uh, in the first session. Audit is a tool that you can use that will take a snapshot after you've done the job. After the balancing contractor has left the job, go ahead and run that if you want to. So you can drag and drop the whole BACnet network over there, or you can drag and drop whatever it is you, would, you want to audit. So what it does is it goes out and says, hey, this is a VAV program. I know what this is. Uh, this is in my standard application library. It even goes and says, hey, I, I know what this air handling program is. It's a custom control. You did it. Um, remember when we made the little check marks and we said we want to audit these points? So that's where that comes into play. So <clears throat> what it's going to do is go out and take a snapshot of all of these controllers. So six months from now, when the customer calls and says, hey, this stuff isn't working. I don't know what's going on. The set points are all weird. The VAVs are acting goofy. Um, I think the stuff's never worked right. Has anybody ever heard all this? Yeah. So you go back to the job and say, OK, <clears throat> Mr. Customer, you know, I'm going to run the audit on here. And it's going to tell me everything you've changed in the last six months on your properties. And you can even export that <laughs> file out, too, and say, hey, here, look, you, all this stuff was changed. So you, all you have to do is say, put it back the way it was when I left. Hit Restore All. It'll, do just like, it'll be just like it was when you left the job site. All your set points and everything will go right back the way they were. And then you go, here's your service report, hopefully. So powerful tool, very handy to use. <clears throat> Are you saying, though, that you had to do the audit when you leave the job originally? Yes. So you have a yeah. comparison? Yes. yes. Okay. You and have that, a. It <coughs> doesn't come through to the backup automatically or anything? Nope. And you can't audit a backup. Like if you had the original backup when you left the job, you can't take the audit out of that or somehow use that to create an audit? No. It's not going to do it. You have to go and do this process to get the audit. Yeah. yeah. And so this side, will, it says stored over here. Right. And I know it's hard to see. but this, So this stuff here is stored. And then this is the, what's currently in the controller. So technically, if you say you did your final permission, but then you, know, you always got a couple tweaks you got to do yep. and later mm -hmm. in a week or two or right. whatever. You run a new auto uh, audit and just save it as yep yep. You know, it is so where I've one rev two or whatever. Sure. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and then when you come back six months later, you can also go through and go, uh, uh, that one's not a big deal. That's just like the cooling set points one temperature off. Right. <clears throat> you can go oh, I'll leave that one, but oh the K factor on this one's off. You know the CFM flow is way off. You want to put all that stuff back to the way it was originally. Well, that's kind of cool. Even if you did a final commission. Let's say you want to make a change a week later just to see if it makes it better. But if yep. it does, you can always just go back. Revert back. Yes. And you can revert it right back to You revert it right back to one way. of the audits. Yes. Yep. And yep. you can store, restore a point, a whole controller. <coughs> yeah. It is a very handy tool I would advise everybody to use. And a lot of people. Yep. I, I think it's 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 got a some misperceptions, I think, of what it's been used for. But um, yeah, it's a, really, it's a real time saver for you. I usually use it if I go out to a job site, one of you guys, is, if I go, would go out there, first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is run an audit. If I'm doing firmware upgrades, I'm going to do an audit of the whole job first. And then after the firmware upgrade, I've got all that. I've, I've changed everything. I'm going to run an audit again 
just to see, make sure everything's good. Doesn't hurt. So that way you got a nice new base to start with. So the other cool thing we can do is, is compare. And there's a compare feature that's built into it. And you can compare really anything you can think of. If you want to just compare your ABs from something you have in your resource library, or if you want to compare a program that you wrote that's in your resource library to one that's already in a controller, or if you want to compare a program you have in your resource library to another one in your resource library and say, I'm not sure if these programs are the same. I can't remember what the difference was between. I know there's something. So shift and control on your keyboard, if you hold those down, and you drag and drop with your, other, with your mouse. So drag and drop. It'll compare those two, whatever it is you're comparing. And it'll come out, and it'll tell you what the differences are. So he did the AVs, and it said, nope, no differences, all good. Will it do? Uh, you can do, uh, yeah, that's fine, change that. He's going to compare the input objects to something I have in my resource library, to the input objects on this live controller. And it comes back and says, oh, I found all these changes. Here's what's different. And there's little triangles there. You can expand those out, and it'll give you a little bit more information. You can compare the whole controller if you want. You could, you could take the whole controller and from your resource library and can drop that over onto the one in your, that's live and say, what are the differences? It's going to take a minute, but it'll, that's a lot of information. But you can. You can also take just a program that you've made, Control Basic. It'll tell you the differences in your Control Basic program from one to another. So you want to do the, uh, do the Control Basic one? Oh. Sorry. Do a program. Yep. Should be an air handler program. Um, yep. So do that one with the program over here. You probably have to expand that out. Oh, okay. Sorry. <clears throat> so there's some differences in between that program and the other program. You can look in, in uh, the source code and go, oh, OK, now I know what I did different. A lot of differences. So what are some other things you can compare that would be handy? I think AVs are probably a big, AVs, BVs. You know, you're like, well, what points do I have set up? One of the big benefits of, of the whole drag and drop feature that I like, if I've got a net sensor, and we were just talking about this a while ago, if I've got a net sensor that I like, you can expand that out. So <clears throat> double click on that DSO, yeah. So if I've got a net sensor that I like set up with all the points in it that I like, so I can drag and drop that over to my resource library. So now I've got that net sensor <laughs> configuration set up. So once I have that, then I can take that net sensor and drag and drop it over here onto the BACnet network. And I can say, OK, I want every net sensor to have the same configuration. And you can say, what properties do I want to use? So if you just had one small property in there, like if you just changed the password on your net sensors, you know we have the 1100 password. If you want 11001 and you want that to be on all of your net sensors, you can just drag and drop it and say, just change the password. So Niagara has some interesting features that make it somewhat challenging when we are BACnet certified. All of our products are BTL certified. So when you 
do some functions in Niagara, like when you were, would right click and hit the set command, that set command by default is going to say, uh, by backnet standards, it says uh, there's no priority. So if there's no priority, backnet says, well, you go to 16. You go to priority 16. So we were having some issues with that. So what this does is that when we have the Niagara compatibility mode, when you would right click and hit the set command, it's going to write to your relinquished default now instead of going to priority 16, which makes a whole lot more sense. I see people shaking their head going, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it, it just is a, and we kind of had to put that in there because obviously we're not going to get Niagara to change what, how they do things. So we have to change how we do things a little bit. <clears throat> the event state override is really the difference between how your uh, alarms are sent to you. So a lot of people that use alarms down in the controller level, <clears throat> they were the difference between intrinsic alarms and algorithmic alarms. So Niagara is using an old standard, and we're using a new standard. The two did not talk well to each other. It's like apples and oranges. So with the, with the event state override, that allows us to get the alarms up to Niagara and, and uh, allows you to be able to see them now in a, in a very basic term, I guess. <clears throat> so the status of them gets passed. The status so of it gets passed, yes. If it's an alarm in the controller, you'll see it red in Niagara. Right. So. And that's because Niagara's uh, software, the way it's written, is, is a little bit older than what we have. So. We're kind of having to go around uh, the, you know, to, to manage how we how we get these these uh, these objects to work correctly. But I think it's going to be good for everybody. You do this in Connect, so the, right now there's no settings in the in Niagara that you would go in and make this. To make this, you would go into this controller. He's in this controller under Niagara compatibility mode and check mark these. By default from the factory, these are not checked. So if you want these, you'd have to go in and check them. So we're using KMC N4 Workbench 4.3. You're out on a job and you had deployed everything using Connect. You got everything uh, application-wise. So now you're coming into your uh, Niagara front end. You're going to pull everything into your supervisor and make graphics. Yeah. <coughs> So he's, he's selected all of these, and he's going to change them from a BACnet device to a KMC BACnet device. And what that allows us to do is use Converge as our tool. So if you look underneath, uh, he's got this KMC object configuration now. If you expand that out, you'll notice that everything that's in that KMC object configuration is exactly the same folders that we saw in Connect. So all the same pieces, parts, so you can go to your in, go ahead and click on your input objects. So there's all your input objects. You can have the opportunity to change those, the names, your setups. <clears throat> you can also convert them to uh, binary if you need to, just like you would do in Connect. So a lot of the same features that you have in Connect are also in the Niagara Converge product. Net sensors have the same um, home display setup. What's different is that you don't have the drag and drop features. So instead of the drag and drop features that you have in Connect, you're going to have to have a, you have a lot of uh, pull down menus and um, properties that you're going to have to change by hitting buttons. So there's the program that we put in. So we're going to go into the block editor. So it's kind of a hybrid between really block programming and line programming. So if you're used to one, you'll understand it. The nice thing is, is that you can make some macros. So if you've got some line code that does net point cache and things like that, that you don't have to rebuild those every time. You don't have to rewrite them. You can simply make a macro of it drag and drop that macro out there as many times as you want in these programs. 
So if you've got a fan command program that you like, you can build those things really quickly. We have routines set up in here so that it sets the program up so it's a little easier to read. <clears throat> so this is a routine that's just for the fan command. And we go back, there's a routine for the fan speed. And then there's a, a routine for the economizer and the heating and cooling as well. And once you have these done, you can copy and paste those routines into different programs and reuse them over and over. So once you've got all of your setup done in um, Connect, all of your points show up over here that you can use to make your blocks. Block Library has all these different uh, features, your if statements, your and statements, or statements, all those logical blocks that you would use in graphical programming. Right. So it'd be like a custom app. So once you've got everything done, you can hit uh, compile and run the program, and it will download it and run it in the piece of uh, uh, hardware that you've uh, that you've asked it to. So source compiled successfully. There's also live values there. You can click on that button. It'll tell you uh, live values while you're working as well. So I've mapped all of my AVs to my AIs and BVs to BIs. Why would I do that? Do you guys do that? Does everybody even? So if I wanted to manipulate these later, if I wanted to manipulate these AIs and BIs, I can do that with an AV. I can go in and override that AV. I can do whatever I want to with it. And it'll make the AI do the same thing. So it's a good practice to do if you want to do some commissioning. If you're checking out your job, it's an easy way to do it. Test your program Test easily. your programs. Yeah. I always recommend you guys map your points you to an AI. And then in the actual like, code, you use the you use the AB. Yeah, use the variable. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. But the actual AI will not get overridden, will it? Right. Right. No. Yeah. It will not. No, no. it will not. <laughs> but it'll show up what you've made that AB. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of tricking it. Yeah. But it's a good practice to do. So you can see how it's separated. Uh, Sorry. That's OK. I'm back. You can see how it separated the fan command section. So it takes the block and yep. it's code. That fan yeah. speed so section. So it's easier to read as you're looking through here. There's your fan speed section. There's your econ section. So you could just copy and paste that as well if you needed to. You wouldn't have to recreate it. Yeah, so the black editor just writes it a lot the line code for you. Yep. So. Yeah, after you've made all that stuff in your block, you hit compile, and it makes this for you. So if you go back to the controller and you open up and connect, and you open that program, you can see the line, or you can see the blocks. Block. Well, you'll see both. You'll see, you'll yeah. see this, but you can't edit this. OK. If you start editing this, you just went down that highway. You've got to pick a road. You're either going to do line or you're going to do block. You can't do both. Yep. So we looked at the block programming. Um, so we went out and downloaded and deployed all those controllers. So now we need to get those points in to those controllers in Niagara. <clears throat> How would we get those points into Niagara? What would be the most typical way people would say, well, I just hit the discover button and go find the, go find it, right? Well, we can do that a little bit easier. So in our converge service, we have a button down there that's called fingerprint. This is our live network over here, controllers yep. that we're talking to. So the fingerprint goes out and says, hey, um, I know what this is. This is a VAV single duct standard program. I know what all those points are. I'm just going to go ahead and it matches up with the library that I have referencing to. 
and it pulls in all the points for you. Uh, yeah, yes. So any AV comes in as writable for you. Yep. <coughs> or BV. Yeah. Yeah. Expand that points so, out, and you'll see the. Uh, so AOs and BOs, they're all writable when we bring them in. And what we also do is uh, we haystack tag them. So if you load up um, the haystack dictionary, we tag the points as they come in for you too with some basic tagging. So. Mm -hmm. So, so that was this KMC application icon, and then underneath that, it added the graphical points folder. Now that graphical points folder is going to be helpful for what we're going to do next with the graphics. And you can drag and drop what, or cut and paste whatever you'd like into that graphics points folder. But we've kind of went out and said, okay, these are some of the points we think you'll want to start with. But you can add whatever you'd like to in this. Yeah. So you can delete points out of here. You can move points from here into that yep. folder to change what you see in your GFX graphic. So we discovered the controllers. We did a fingerprint. Then it went out and found the applications it matched. It's brought in all the points. It's made a graphical points folder. Now we can make a mobile graphic for it using our GFX module. So he's going to hit build site. It's going to go look at the network tree and say, OK, what do I have out there that's got that application folder in there? And uh, it'll pick out these VAV controllers. So once he's done that, he can hit generate site. So that just generated graphics for you. That just made HTML5 graphics. So it gives you a quick graphic that you can override set points. It also knows, hey, this is, a, this is even a VAV picture because it knows it's a VAV controller. If it was a rooftop unit, it would pull up a picture of a rooftop unit. So it also pulls through, because we're using Niagara's mobile uh, apps, it pulls through the override, the purple. Yep. If something's an alarm and the status is red, you'll see it. Anything with a pencil here, you it's can command. It has actions. It yep. uses the actions that you have in the station. And then if you take those actions away, you know, you might take away the emergency, it will automatically update for you. So then you wouldn't see the actions here. Yeah, if you go and hide those slots, it won't show them. So you don't have to change that stuff in two different places, right. just in your station, and we pick it up in the GFX graphics for you. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, a mobile graphic. comes up on your phone, iPad, whatever it is you want to look at it as. You can shrink it down. And it looks just as nice on a small screen. So if your job site needs graphics quickly that you're working on, this is a very, very nice tool. Or if they just want, if your spec specification says it needs to have some kind of a mobile graphic that you can see on a phone, you can use this. And they would just log in using this username, password to get onto the mobile site, whereas they would use the local login to look at the usual normal PX pictures with the fans spinning and all that stuff. Does this work in AX? Yes. That's a great playing. question. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It also works in the browser. So. Yes. So I know there's a lot of specs out there now that are saying, hey, it's got to have some kind of a mobile application. This is your tool to use. And it's very quickly done. Can you, you know, I've heard that you can do some navigation stuff with it. Yeah. Maybe Greg could show us how to do that. I can do that. So what he's doing is he's making a 
floor one, he made it apparent. You can also add more value items to that if you needed to. Drill down into the uh, component or file chooser. <clears throat> if you wanted to discharge air temp, for instance, from the air handler. Oh, I don't Whatever, pull, doesn't I don't matter. Pull, uh, points in there. Yeah. So every time you've made changes, he just says generate site. So it just generates another HTML page for you, updates it for you in the browser. So now he's got a floor one. Your so I mobile, quickly added uh, some navigation. Yeah, your, uh, your, your schedule app just looks like, a, uh, like what you would see in a Niagara with the bars are going across and you can slide and drag and drop however you'd like them to navigate to. The other thing you can do is add um, <clears throat> on your template, you can add a template. Um, oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. So I have a floor plan and on the floor plan I can add a value there and maybe you just have an air handler serving that floor. So I added that value so the end user can quickly look and say, oh yeah, that temperature looks good if it's discharge of that unit. Or maybe you want to put occupied or both. You can put up to four values on this line. Now here, so I could add the active set point and the temperature of all of those boxes on a floor, let's say. So they can quickly look at this screen and know if I've got issues on that floor and then bounce from floor to floor to floor real quickly, see if they've got an issue. Mm -hmm. So I can add up to four values on each one of these lines, too. <clears throat> so I could add like occupancy mode, active temperature, and what the real temperature is in the space and know quickly if it's, uh, you know, I need to go get to a space, if it's hot, if it's cold. What if I wanted to change that uh, picture so it doesn't say KMC controls and says, my companies can. I don't know why you would want to do that. I don't know yeah. why you would, but. <laughs> you can edit all of that stuff too. So you can change the name of the yeah. site. In the template, you can change the colors and stuff too. Oh, yeah. I can change what the icon is. I can add or put my own website in there, but. And then after I make any change, I just generate the site again. And you can also create templates. So if you have some third-party devices or an air handler that's custom, you can use this template function. And if you relativize, so you can create it, relativize the points, and then you can drag in, you know, if you've got 100 VAVs on this job, you drag and drop them, select that template, and it'll build all of them pointing to the right controller for you. Then again, you just generate the HTML. And you're done. Go back to your browser, and they're going to be there for you. So a few things we did behind the scenes. This is using um, Niagara's mobile apps. So you have to have the apps loaded on the station. So, And then we created, we also created a shortcut user for you down here in the palette in the GFX palette, which you can just drag and drop onto the users. And then it'll write in there which nav file to use when you create it. So it, we've done, we've added some shortcuts for you. So mm -hmm. save you time. You can also embed, so if you want to put a PX graphic in there, you can add an iframe. And then you just point it to the, uh, and you have to create your PX. You want to take it from a regular PX and put it onto a mobile PX pane so it's smaller. And then you can embed those into the GFX graphics. So, and uh, I always recommend that you take all your set points off the graphics and just have your real live data on there because it can get kind of small if you're looking at that on a phone. Yeah. Uh, alarms, yep. um, histories does everything functionality-wise that you would get in Niagara. And schedules. So if you add a schedule item, it'll search the station, pick up all the schedules, and add them to the app. 
I think for the speed, you can't beat it. It's just, it goes out and does its thing and it's done and nothing flat. It's just, for me, I, that's, a, that's a game changer. And you can also customize it. Third-party yeah, devices. It. If you need graphics in 10 minutes or less, this will do it. 